We'll begin our service with the first hymn, Longing for Light We Wait in Darkness. to be here at St. Al St. <laughs> St. Silas, Albert Park, again, pre-recording the uh, diocesan service. Uh, my name is Bishop Jameeve Blackwell, for those of you who don't know me. The Reverend Sophie Watkins is unable to be with us today, but I'm glad of the support from members of the parish in, in just assisting with the service today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all the desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Go before us, O Lord, and further us with the, your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those authorities that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Do you wish to have no fear of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive its approval, for it is God's servant for your good. But if you do what is wrong, you should be afraid for the authority does not bear the sword in vain. It is the servant of God to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also because of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants busy with this very thing. Pay to all what is due them, taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory to, to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, 
Does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. For the Gospel of the Lord. The words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. Jesus' exhortation to his disciples also exhortations about forgiveness and reconciliation in response, all in response to a question about greatness. Verse 1 of the chapter. Who are these little ones? That's important to think about. Weak, vulnerable children, of course. Whom, children has whom Jesus has just been talking about. Jesus has just told them in the previous chapter he's going to accomplish his work by losing his life. The disciples do not want to think about that, about losing, in effect. They want to think in terms of winning. So they ask, as I said, verse 1, who will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? But Jesus makes very clear that is not what the kingdom of heaven is about. It's about becoming like a child, humble like a child, and welcoming such a child in Jesus' name, not putting any stumbling block in their way. Children are not successful people in control of their lives. Yeah, we can tend to idealise childhood sometimes, but the reality is children are powerful, powerless, defenceless, dependent, and waiting to grow up. Jesus gives two very striking pictures regarding these little ones. The first is angels. It's very poignant what Jesus is saying here. The angels who look after these little ones, it could be Jesus is talking about individual guardian angels, although the angels do not guard the little ones so much as bring their situation before God. But the point is, these angels don't have to cover their faces. Unlike, say, the angels at the prophet Isaiah's commissioning in Isaiah chapter 6. If you read there, you see the angels, the seraphim, God's attendants in the heavenly throne room, with two of their six wings, they're covering their faces, hiding them in awe before the glory and majesty of the living God. And that is the normal condition of angels in, in Jewish tradition. They almost always covered their faces to avoid looking directly at God. 
the angels who look after these little ones are allowed, welcomed even, to look on God directly. That's how important they are. Or rather, that's how important these little ones are to God. The little ones include those who are weak and vulnerable at other times of life too, not just in ch children. The chronically sick, physically, mentally, the elderly and infirm, refugees and asylum seekers, women in many cultures. COVID-19, if anything, has amplified their vulnerability, the vulnerability of all these little ones. And I can go on. Indigenous people, isolated people, anyone our culture tends to screen out, so to speak. And as I said, COVID-19, if anything, has just amplified their vulnerability. The other picture Jesus uses is better known, but still striking. And the point is the same, really. The shepherd leaving the 99 sheep while he goes looking for the lost one. The sovereign God is not happy to say, well, that's okay, we've got 99, let's not worry about the old silly one that drifts away from the flock, probably not worth much anyway. No, this is the one that matters. When you think about it, a lost sheep for all practical purposes, is a dead sheep. It could be attacked by wolves, fall down a precipice. Someone else could take it for their own flock. Jesus is saying that it is not the will of the Father that any of these little ones should perish. Just like it wasn't the will of the shepherd that one sheep should be lost. God doesn't wait around for those who are lost to find their way back. The shepherd didn't wait for the sheep to come back. He went out and looked for it. God wants us to see the little ones. God wants us to go out and look for them. God rejoices when the lost are found. What follows are three different sayings of Jesus all to do with forgiveness, greatness and power. Remember that question that I said at the beginning of the chapter? Greatness and power usually lie at the root of the need for forgiveness and reconciliation. There are three sayings that are all to, do, all to varying degrees can be difficult to understand as well. Firstly, how you deal with it if someone sins against you, verses 15 to 17. It can sound like Jesus is saying you can have three goes to sort the problem out and then that's it. But let's not be quick to forget the parable Jesus has just told. The shepherd prepared to leave all the rest of the flock to find one sheep, risking everything to find a single stray. And immediately following this, Jesus will tell the parable of the unforgiving servant to illustrate the importance of always being prepared to forgive when St. Peter wants to put a number on it. It's also important to consider what Jesus means when he says we are to treat people as Gentiles and, a tax, collect and tax collectors. Gentiles and tax collectors were outcasts in Jewish society. Gentiles, they were pagans. They worshipped other gods. Tax collectors ripped their own people off at the same time as doing the work of the Roman occupying forces. Jesus has just finished talking about actively seeking outcasts. They are the lost. Jesus hung around with them, as we know. He did not give up on them. What we have here are very wise words about how to handle, 
how to co cope with, how to confront conflict. Difference. Try and deal with it privately first. There's no need for public humiliation. It's important to think of the other person and keep the issue first or central. When you go to see someone, it's far harder, talk with them, it's far harder to caricaturise their position. What Jesus is talking about here is the opposite of giving up on each other, the opposite of drawing up the battle lines, so to speak, without actually relating to the other person. And even when you are relating to the person, let's not forget what Jesus says elsewhere about the log in your own eye. <laughs> in what he's saying here, there's also a realism. In effect, he's making an important distinction that forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. Relationships, it cannot always be restored. Issues cannot always be resolved. Whether it's because people aren't ready to recognise the problem, see it from your point of view, whether it's because people are just simply not prepared to admit they have done anything wrong, whether it's because people are not prepared to make any real change that would make a difference. We might be prepared to forgive, but a fully restored relationship is very much a two-way street. Jesus is talking about within the church here, what it means for those who follow him to gather, to belong together, whether we're talking just very small numbers or whether we're talking about big numbers and whether we're talking about informally as Christians, whether we're talking about in the institution, you know, in parishes and so on. But what he says here also really applies, doesn't it, to forgiveness and reconciliation more broadly when you think about it. Refusal to recognise the problem, admit wrongdoing, refusal to work for change, this is exactly the brick wall Indigenous people struggle with as seen in, for example, their statement of the heart and the response to it or lack thereof. And forgiveness does not equal saying people can do what they want to you or it doesn't matter that people hurt you. It does. It matters very much. If it didn't matter, then there would be no need for forgiveness, for the cost of forgiveness. And people may have to indicate in some way that they are not prepared to keep on or not able to keep on putting up with what is happening. In some situations, it may even need, it may be necessary to take action to protect oneself. Again, as I said before, this is true whether within the church or more broadly. I mean, these are the issues anyone experiencing family violence has to work through. Reconciliation, fully restored relationships are a two-way street. The most you may be able to do is recognise the other as lost and pray for them. Be prepared to forgive because of that. The second saying about things being bound and loosed, verse 18, follows on. Jesus is saying seriously and plainly, what will happen if anyone follows an unforgiving, unshepherd-like course? Remember that distinction I've made between forgiveness and reconciliation. But Jesus is saying what follows if people follow an unforgiving, unshepherd-like course. It's flagged by our men, truly. Jesus' standard way of calling attention to what he intends as a very serious pronouncement. If you go around 
binding your brother's or sister's sins on them, if you treat them like an outcast instead of joining them in their lostness, as, he, as Jesus has joined Gentiles and tax collectors in theirs, then the deadly rule of unforgiveness will be all you have here or hereafter. But if you loose their sins, if you move towards them in unconditional, unlimited forgiveness, then the life-giving rule of grace will prevail, both now on earth and forever in heaven. Jesus, I think, is talking here about what it means to put our faith in God's costly reconciliation. To recognise his costly, God's costly reconciliation through Jesus. To recognise in terms of our epistle reading today, St Paul to the Romans, that love is the fulfilment of the law. It's not that anything goes as long as you feel good about it. No, rather the love which wells up from within the spirit-filled heart is known precisely by its obedience to the commandments which protect us from wrongdoing and being wronged by one another. And thirdly, there's the third saying, God answering prayer, verses 19 to 20. Again, I want to say, let's not forget these verses come just before the parable of the unforgiving servant. It's going to follow. They are also the capstone of our passage today, immediately following the parable of the lost sheep. So therefore, what these about, again, remember, it's very important. It, again, truly I tell you, signal here, very important statement. What it's about, I think, primarily, is the way forgiveness seeks out the lost. That's the context where this amazing promise is made that if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. It's primarily about the way forgiveness seeks out the lost. Jesus is saying if two of his disciples, that is the church, two people following him, agree to forgive rather than give up on someone, excommunicate them, so to speak, if we want to talk formally, then the Father will ratify and confirm their decision with all the power of his grace. And I think anyone, anyone who's had a serious difference with someone, especially within the church, and when you've been able to work through those issues together, I can think of experiences in my own life, I can think of experiences as a bishop, when I've had the privilege of facilitating a conversation between two people who have had serious differences and what it actually, how life-giving it is when they are able to forgive each other and move forward. The Father will ratify and confirm any decision like that with all the power of his grace. And God will do that precisely because wherever two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name, there is Jesus himself, the friend of publicans, and sinners, tax collectors, Gentiles. The good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The beloved son in whom the father sees his whole creation forgiven and made new.
let's affirm as ours the faith of the church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Oh, sorry. I was going to say we are now going to pray for the church and for the world. I was looking for my script as it is in the prayer book, sorry. <laughs> Loving God, we give you thanks that you have created a world of rich beauty and diversity. Hear our prayers for all the people of the earth. We pray for those whose lands are invaded and whose homes are destroyed, for those who suffer from starvation and disease, for leaders of tribes and nations, and for all who govern. Open our eyes to recognize you among us in your little ones who are hungry and homeless. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks that you have revealed yourself to us in your Son. Hear our prayers for your church, its clergy and people for all priests and pastors and those responsible for the church's resources. Today we pray for our Archbishop Philip, Bishop Geneve, and our Vicar Sophie. Open our eyes to recognize you among us wherever two or three gather in your name. Loving God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks that you teach us the ways of forgiveness and reconciliation. Hear our prayers for the people of this community. We pray for those who are suffering from the pandemic, for those who have been made redundant because of the crisis, and those who cannot find work. We pray for those whose needs are ignored and those who cannot care for themselves. We pray for ourselves and each other, our families and our friends. Open our eyes to recognize you among us in your little ones who are forgotten and despairing. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that you heal the sick and go in search of those who have lost their way. Hear our prayers for all who are in need. We pray for those whose lives are ruled by addiction to alcohol, drugs, or gambling, for the brokenhearted and those who have lost all purpose in life, for the sick and the dying and all who minister to them. Open our eyes to recognize you among us in your little ones who are sick and suffering. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks that you rejoice to bring home all your sons and daughters. We remember all who have died in your love. 
we give thanks for those who have disclosed your love to us, for those whose yearly remembrance falls at this time. Help us to live so others will recognize you in our midst, that with the angels and saints and all your little ones, we may come to see your face in heaven. Loving God, in your mercy, hear Thank our prayer. You. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love, and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was portrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we, for we all, all share, share in, in the one, one bread. In the singing, in the silence, in the hands expectant,
the gifts of God for the people of God. As I receive the sacrament on behalf of us all, I invite you to take a moment of silence to prepare yourself. Imagine you're receiving the sacrament here with me for this body and blood of Christ are yours as they are mine. Living God, in this holy meal, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us, give us courage for our pilgrimage, and bring us to the joys you promise. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Peace of God which follows, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.